Okay, so now we move on to time measurement tool. And on the screen, you can see uh, there are two kind of stopwatch. One is called the analog, one is called the digital. So if you remember, we talk about the digital Werner caliper. The idea is very similar. For digital, it has been somewhat designed with a display usually uh, that you can see it values directly. So uh, I'm pretty sure that you have used it probably for sports days. As for analog, that refer to usually with a needle, you can see, and obviously you just have to refer to a starting point, and ending point, or actually for digital as well, you, you may want to refer to that as well. Uh, so that is to pay attention to the zero error that we mentioned in the previous video, and also in this analog stopwatch, you need to pay attention when maybe you measure for things that are longer than one minute, that is 60 seconds, then you may need to count how many minutes has passed but i think the smaller scale in here will tell you the minutes so maybe the maximum uh, limit you can see is uh, maybe for half an hour 30 minutes but after that what will happen it will just keep looping so i guess that's the limitation with this analog stopwatch but anyway uh, you can use either both of them uh, in your experiment basically so here Let's say uh, I give you a scenario where a student wants to measure the time for one swing of the pendulum. Well, I don't have a really good pendulum at home, but then I just grab a random object. I think that's fine too. Uh, so you can imagine what uh, that student did was uh, to release this and then just stop all right, for one swing. So I'll do it again, start, stop, start, stop. Okay, so this is how you can measure one swing. So he somehow managed to measure using the uh, stopwatch above uh, to find out the time taken is actually 2.5 so obviously this is not accurate do you know why smart people like you may find out the answer down below here actually reaction time so think about when you are using the stopwatch to measure anything there must be a certain reaction time so imagine when you try to measure uh, the time for a swimmer in a swimming gala uh, the judge actually have a reaction time also so that actually contribute to the measurement error so do you know how much how much how long the reaction time is let's do a test to find out okay so I will do a demonstration here and by the end of this video, I will also want you to put your results in the comment section below. I promise I would only take one time. I will not keep playing and then I just show you my best result. I just play one time, okay? So what you can do is uh, go to the link that I provide you to you in the notes and you just have to click the start, uh, click once for start and then you can see the red screen. Okay, so terrible reaction for sure uh, because I was trying to say uh, you have to press your mouse uh, left click when you see the green color so uh, the thing is for this test uh, it actually provide you five times of trial so they will show you the average reaction time and this is actually something you want to do in science as well because uh, if you want a reliable result you can't just take one measurement for example if someone somehow uh, just accidentally predict the green color like the green screen then uh, can you you can't claim that person is just having a really strong reaction time because that is just simply by luck or by just an incident only so that's why you need to keep uh, to try more few more trials and that will make the result more reliable okay and by the way uh, in, in case you are thinking that oh you can predict the time you cannot right because every time is a bit uh, random right uh, for the green screen to pop up so I'll try four more times okay this time for real is much better this is my true reaction time I would say but anyway I'll keep my previous record too see see this is very consistent for me right so the previous one is more like for warm-up so I guess for you if you find out oh the first time you didn't do very well I guess it's fine you can just uh, repeat I mean you can refresh the whole thing again to restart and then you can uh, measure a more reliable one all right maybe the first time you didn't do well is because you are not familiar with this system and that's is disregard to the uh, reaction time so let me do two more trials 
Ah, this time is a bit slower. Last one. Okay, I think I think it's fair. Okay, so um, I actually I'm not sure. I think they somehow changed the screen. I'm not sure this is the average or what. I think this should be the average. Two, three, two, should be the average. So yeah, I think I think so. Yeah, that that should be the average. Okay, so put down your reaction time in the comment section below. Try it out. Really, don't be don't be shy. And um, let me ask you a question. Do you know how fast the Olympian uh, athletes would be? So think about because of for the uh, say runner or swimmers, they should have a quicker reaction time because for those people, especially for example a hundred meters runner, the time that they run for hundred meters is like less than ten seconds. So your reaction time kind of is quite inferential. So if you think about me uh, going to Olympia, like my reaction time is already kind of putting myself in a disadvantage because I will have a 0 0.232 second all right, or 232 millisecond um, be, before I actually start to run so uh, probably for the Olympia athletes uh, it, they would have a reaction time of about uh, 0 0.15 so 150 millisecond according to uh, the internet and also I've been using this website for quite a few years in my teaching I just realized they also got other tests so I guess if, if you are really interested into doing those you can go and try it and if you like to see me playing those tests let me know in the comment section as well and maybe you can have a mini competition on that all right back to our notes I guess I have to put down my result or oh, not second millisecond okay and uh, back to here so then you can think about this when this student measure the time as in 2.5 like let's say um, ordinary person like me right with maybe for younger people person like you you'll be better be faster uh, but then imagine your measurement actually may have 2.5 second plus or minus 0 0.232 so uh, let's just say 0 0.2 seconds shall we so then uh, it won't be very accurate because if you try to calculate the percentage of these uh, 0 0.2 over 2.5 so roughly is about I guess 8 percent or 10 percent at most um, of an error so that wouldn't be very good so can you think of how we can measure the time for one swing accurately pause the video think about it and we'll discuss later a few moments later all right so the answer is actually by measuring more times of swing so for example uh, you don't actually have to do just once right you can actually do 10 times for example so maybe one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then you probably would be able to measure a time let's say let's say roughly maybe 224 Three or maybe 0.7 let's say okay because it should be roughly about 10 times of 2.5 so let's say 24.7 um, and in that case notice that why this can be more accurate is because with this measurement of 10 swing you still have the same uncertainty of plus or minus 0 0.2 because again 0 0.2 is from your reaction time your reaction time is always I mean not always but supposed to be a constant doesn't really matter of how long you measure because the only reaction is like when you press a button right so this will be the measurement for 10 swing if you try to measure for one swing according to this then you will have divide the whole thing by 10 then you get 2.47 plus or minus 0 0.02 so you can notice that uh, the percentage in terms of this versus what you have earlier is much much lower it's about 10 times lower in this case so this would be one way of making the measurement more accurate in this case so what we can say about this in words is uh, you can say um, measure multiple or more swings uh, and then you can divide the number of 
just like how we do for measuring a stack of paper I mean a piece of paper then what you do is find a stack of paper measure it and divide by maybe 100 pieces of paper then you can measure and estimate how thick it is for one paper same idea here however here I give you another challenge because with what we suggested earlier just now with 10 swing or even more uh, even when you do 100 you still you can't avoid that there is still reaction time because reaction time is 0 0.2 let's say if you do 100 times it will still be 0 0.002 or if you do 1000 times it will still be 0 0.0002 it's still you can't take away the effect of this not to mention that the pendulum cannot go forever right it cannot go for i think i think for like 30 times already it, it kind of like stopped already so uh it may not be a good idea to do that um can you think about a an alternative to completely reduce the reaction time so the reaction time would literally become zero pause the video think about it I'll tell you the answer afterwards. Two thousand years later. All right. So the answer is actually very simple, but kind of genius and technological as well. So the way that you have to do simply is, I mean, you you still can measure like ten swing if you want to, and that would still be good because there's some other errors as well. But then one way of reducing the reaction time could simply be imagine there is a pendulum swinging around here what you can do is you can set up a camera simply it could be simply your phone so uh, you just have to take a video of it and then you can check it out in the replay simply then there is no reaction time because you can simply check the time from the timeline of your video software uh, if you think that your video software's timeline is not accurate enough because for say iPhone or any other thing uh, the time that they show is by one second right so if you check your video on your phone you can see that oh uh, usually they start from zero 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 and then zero uh, zero minute zero one second right so by one second so you can you can see that the uncertainty is large because it's by one second in the phone what you can do instead uh, to add on to this is you could actually put a uh, timer here so the timer as in uh, those we just see above like those digital or analog probably digital is better because analog is pretty hard to see in the camera and also there's some other issue with uh, your viewing angle the parallax error we set so maybe a digital uh, stopwatch to put next to the pendulum then you can see in the video when it starts you can, you can just pause your video and check out the starting time and then when they come back or maybe after 10 swing or even one swing it probably is quite accurate too then you can pause the video and then check out the timers reading so this is a way uh, we can do in the lab with the help from technology